problems similar to civil engineering board exam in the Philippines. A chord is selected at random on a fixed circle, and you are required to find the probability that the length of the chord is longer than the radius of the circle. Which of the following cannot be your answer? Letter A, 0.5. Letter B, 0.667. Letter C, 0.866. And letter D, 0.75. Good day, Mathalino. Again, I am Junvert. In this channel, I am sharing to you my personal strategies on how to solve engineering math problems. So if you are new in here, consider subscribing. How can we select a chord on a circle in a precise way? Can you define a particular way on how to select a chord on a circle? Because if you can, that will be the basis of our calculations for finding the chances that the length of that chord exceeds the radius of the circle. Of course you can, but how about the other ways that is not the same to what you are going to do? Should we render them invalid? There are seemingly infinite number of ways to select a chord of a circle. To show what I mean, let us have some examples. You can define a chord according to its distance from the bottom of the circle. Imagine you are pumping water into a cylindrical tank whose axis is parallel to the ground. At the circular end of the tank, you can see that the water surface can be defined as a chord of a circle. Another way to define a chord is to select a random point outside the circle and construct a second to the circle that passes through this point. In this way alone, you can now define a chord in infinite number of ways because there are infinite points that you can randomly select outside the circle. Or, we can define a chord from a fixed point outside the circle and select a random point on the circumference of the circle. For non-fixed point outside the circle, we can also define a circular chord by defining our outside point to traverse on some defined path like an ellipse. Example is the circle that is tangent internally to this ellipse. This is another way to define a chord of a circle. A more interesting way to define a circular chord is by using Kepler's second law of planetary motion. It states that a radius vector joining any planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal lengths of time. How our circle then related to planetary motion? For this animation, one of the foci of the ellipse, this one, is the sun, and this is the planet. And this focus of the ellipse is the center of the circle. What is the relation of the circle to the movement of this planet along its orbit? It was found that if you arrange the velocity vectors of the planet so that all their tails is at one point, the head of the vectors, the end that contains the arrowhead, will form into a circle. Note that the direction of the velocity vectors is always tangent to the ellipse, and this is the way we define the chord of the circle. Let us not go far from our surveying subject. If we traverse on a circular road, or a simple curve, our line of sight can be defined as a chord of a circle. This chord is defined by the clear distance between the center line of the road and some sight obstruction. This clear distance is called the middle ordinate. Okay, and there are many more. These are but just few of the many possible ways to define a chord of a fixed circle. If you do numerical calculations to it, it will arrive to different answers. That's why, going back to our problem, you can see that there are four choices and we will only accept one, the one that cannot be an answer to the probability. But how are we going to define our chord? The answer to that is by using plausible or reasonable method to define the chord. But the problem is, the word plausible itself is subjective. 
Defining circular chord as a sight distance on a simple curve is plausible to highway engineers, but not to astronomers whose field of interest are the movement of heavenly bodies. The Kepler's law of planetary motion will resonate more to them. On the other hand, the guy who watched the pressure gauge at the bottom of the tank will find the liquid surface to be plausible definition of a circular chord than to the first two persons. So on what premise are we going to calculate our probability so that it will be acceptable to all undertakings? We will go to the very basic, the geometry of the circle itself. I believe you will agree on me with that. If you are not yet convinced, I will refer you to the source of this problem, the book entitled 50 Challenging Problems in Probability with Solutions by Frederick Mosteller. In the premise of geometry, Mosteller listed three plausible definitions of a chord of a circle. Number one, assume that the distance of the chord from the center of the circle is uniformly distributed over the radius of the circle. For the calculations for that, we have the circle and we draw an equilateral triangle. Now, take note that this is equilateral triangle. Whatever is the length here is equal to the length here is equal to the length here. So all these lengths are equal to R. All the included angles are equal to 60 degrees. This is our R and this is also equal to R. If we are going to bisect that angle at the center, that is 30 degrees. And the opposite leg is R over 2. So we are interested to this one, the D. Number of favorable ways for our probability, number of favorable ways, our chord is within this distance. Over the total number of ways, R. What is the length D in terms of R? Pythagorean theorem. D squared plus R over 2 squared is equal to R squared from this right triangle. Okay, we solve this right triangle. What is the value of D? This is R squared all over 4. Transpose, we will have 1 minus 1 fourth. That is 3 fourth. Square root of that, the D is square root of 3 all over 2 of R. What is the probability for the assumption number 1? I will change the color. The probability is equal to number of favorable ways. If the chord is within this distance, this green line, our length of chord is longer than this radius, the length of the radius, so D over R. Number of favorable ways, total number of ways is from here up to here. Okay, so we have this D, square root of 3, all over 2 of R, all over R, and this is equal to 0 0.866 meaning we are going to eliminate this option because this can be an answer to the probability we are looking for a quantity which cannot be an answer to this probability another way to view this problem is to assume that the midpoint of the chord is uniformly distributed over the interior of the circle so this is the midpoint of our chord and this point is uniformly distributed over the interior of our circle, this yellow circle. Okay? This chord is longer than the radius. Take note that this red line is equal to the length of the radius of the circle. Okay? We intentionally draw it this way so that we can define the boundary. Now, if the midpoint of the chord of the circle is within this green circle, the length of the chord is longer than the radius of the circle. Outside this green circle, it is shorter than the length of the radius of the circle. Alright? So, therefore, the probability for that is what? Number of favorable ways, this green area, over the total number of ways, the total area. Okay? So, we are going to calculate this area. Alright? Erase this one. The probability is equal to area of this circle that is pi d squared 
all over the total number of ways, pi r squared. This is number of vibrable ways, that is within the circle, inner circle, all over the total number of ways, anywhere on the circle. Cancel the pi. So what will remain is square root of, uh, what will remain is square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, of r squared all over r squared. So this will become 3 fourth. So which means we are going to eliminate this option because this can be an answer to the problem. Again, we are looking for uh, a quantity that cannot be an answer to this probability. Alright? The third view for this problem is to assume that the endpoints of the chord are uniformly distributed over the circumference of the circle. So we have these two endpoints. Uh, to calculate the probability with this view, we have this regular hexagon. Take note that for a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle, all sides are equal to R. So whatever is this radius of the circle, that will be the side of the hexagon equal to the radius of the circle. Now, we fix this one end and we randomly select a point on the circumference of the circle for this other end. Okay? As you can see from our animation that if this point will go outside this arc, okay, the length of chord of the circle or the length of our chord is longer. Okay? is longer than the radius of the circle. This this length is equivalent to the radius of the circle. But if our end, other end of the chord will go inside this arc, what will happen? The chord is shorter than the length of the radius of the circle. So how to calculate the probability? Number of vibrable ways, okay? over the total number of ways, alright? Number of vibrable ways that our chord is longer than the radius of the circle is when the chord is within this arc. These arcs, we have this 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 arcs all over the total number of ways. A total of 6 arcs. So the answer is 4 divided by 6. And in decimal, that is 0.667. Which means that we are going to eliminate this option. Okay? Because this can be an answer to our problem, to this probability. The required, which of the following cannot be the answer to this probability? Letter A, 0 0.5. Alright? What if you can find a way to describe the chord so that it will come up a probability of 0.5? There is a big chance that you can find that definition of a chord, but in the premise of geometry, I think we cannot find a chord, definition of a chord that will come up to 0 0.5. Anyway, if you can come up a 0 0.5 probability in the premise of geometry of the circle, uh, please comment below. Okay? Uh, thank you for watching. And again, have a good day. See you in our next video. Bye-bye!